Good day, students. So in this group, we're going to be going over um, part three of the integrated algebra regions exam for January 2013. We're going to be doing questions um, 11 to 15 in this installment. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number 11. All right, so for question 11, we were asked uh, which verbal expression is represented by um, two parentheses x plus 4. Okay. All right, so uh, we notice that we're doubling something in this expression. We're doubling x plus 4, the sum of x and 4, okay? So um, basically, we read it exactly how it's written. So it's twice uh, x plus 4. What does the operation plus uh, represent in word form? It's sum, right? So we are doubling. This two times basically means twice the sum of x and 4, okay? So for um, number 11, it says twice the sum of x of a, of a number and 4. So x basically represents any number, like a arbitrary number. We do not know what it is as a variable. So twice the sum of x and 4 is an excellent representation of what we have here. Okay? All right. Let's move along to question number 12. 12 says how many cubes with 5-inch sides will completely fill a cube um, that is 10 inch on the side. Okay, so we have fill in here. So when you think about fill, you think about capacity. In this case, you're dealing with volume. All right. I'm going to solve this problem in two different ways. I'm going to solve the first. Um, the first, I'm going to use a sketch. Okay. So let's say we have a five, a cube that's five inch on the side. So let's say we have a cube like this. And uh, one side measure is five inches, so five by five by five. Okay, so the question is how many of this will fill another cube that is uh, five inches on all, I mean, I'm sorry, that's 10 inches on all three sides, part of my sketch. So um, we can figure, actually figure out this problem just by making a sketch. So if it's five by five and this is 10 by 10 by 10, that simply means that we have on the first layer, we have two cubes, two of the five inch cubes. So we can break it down the center like this, break down that down the center like that, break this down the center, okay, like that. All right, and then going up, since it's 10 uh, inches high, that means we're going to have to stack, make two stacks, okay? So like this, like that. All right, so in this sketch, we have uh, this side is 5, and that side is 5, and that's 5. So how many of these cubes do we have? On the first layer, we have 4, and on the top layer, we have 4. So 4 on top and 4 on the bottom, we have a total of 8 cubes. Okay? So you see the answer is option 3. Now, what if we don't know how to sketch, or we don't want to make use of the visual? But we can use the whole idea of the volume formula. Okay? So we know, uh, we know what the volume of a cube is. It's basically length times width times height. So volume is equal to length times width times height. So to figure out how many of this can fill that, um, we're going to basically divide this total volume by this little volume right here. So let's call um, the smaller volume V1 <clears throat> and a bigger volume V2, okay? So V1 is simply going to be 5, the length times the width of 5 times the height of 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. That's V1, volume of the smaller cube. And the volume of the larger cube is going to be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000, okay? So how many of this, how many of this can fill that? So we just simply uh, compute um, V2, the bigger volume divided by the smaller volume, okay? The bigger volume is 1,000, divide that by the smaller volume, which is 125, all right? So let's reduce this and divide by 5, top and bottom. 1,000 divided by 5 um, is 200, So because 5 goes in 10 twice, 200. 125 divided by 5 is 25. We can reduce again by dividing top and bottom by 5. Divide by 5, divide by 5. 5 divided by uh, 200 is 40, because 5 goes in 24 times and then bring the 0 over. 25 divided by 5 is 5. 5 over 40 is 8. So we can see that eight of these will completely fill a cube that has dimensions 10 by 10 by 10. All right. So we see that our answer certainly is option number three. 
Right, let's take a look at question 13. It says the school newspaper will survey students about the quality of school of the school's lunch program. Which method will create the least bias result? Okay. If you think of what bias means, bias means that you lean in a certain direction. Either you like or dislike the school's food. All right. So we want to create least bias. We want as much people as possible. We do not want to focus um, our sample space on people that are leaning in a certain direction. Okay. So uh, A says, the first one says 25 vegetarians are randomly surveyed. So what's the problem here? Vegetarians, what do you think they'll, they'll what do you think their viewpoints would be about um, non-vegetarian food, foods containing meats? They are going to be leaning away from it, right? And what if the school lunch program does not cater to vegetarians? So since these people have a specific diet special preference, they are already biased by default. So if you restrict your sample space, so the people that are already biased towards a certain type of food, that's not a fair, um, a fair um, sample space. Okay, so this is not a good option since it's biased towards vegetarians. Twin, number two says 25 students are randomly chosen from each grade level. Okay, is there any bias here? Uh, if they're randomly chosen, do they lean in any direction? Since there's a randomization in the selection process, um, there is no bias in the selection process so this should be the best option that there is let's see if there's any better option three says students who dislike the school lunch program students dislike is already a bias they're biased to the negative side so um their survey is also going to lean in that direction for and then that's not good and four a booth is set up in the cafeteria for students to voluntarily complete the survey all right so this does not involve selection you're not selecting the students to um, do the survey. So when a student volunteers to complete a survey, in most cases they already buy out. There's something that they want to complain about or comment um, in order for them to be motivated to voluntarily uh, complete their survey. All right, so the volunteers more likely than not will be biased because that's what's motivating their desire to volunteer. All right, so we select randomly. That's the best way to ensure that um, there isn't any bias in the selection process. So option number two is the best choice. All right, let's move on to question 14. It says of the vertex of the parabola y equals x squared plus 8x plus 10 lies in. Uh, now, there are two ways you can do this, um, answer this problem. Let me show you the first way. It involves finding the, the coordinates of the vertex, okay? You need to remember that the coordinate of the vertex is given by negative b over 2 a for the x coordinate and f of negative b over 2a which is what you get when you plug in the x coordinate back into your function all right uh, and the second method involves placing this in um in vertex form so let's use method one so for method one we have the quadratic y equals x square plus 8x plus 10. in this case a is positive one okay there isn't any coefficient for x squared, so the default coefficient is 1. So a is 1, b is 8, and c is 10. All right? So the x coordinates of our vertex, x vertex uh, is negative b over 2a, so let's plug in the values. So it's going to be negative 8 over 2 times 1, which is negative 8 over 2, which equals negative 4. All right? So that shows us that we're either going to be in quadrant um, two or three, because if you draw a coordinate system, if you're in the negative x area, negative x, this is your x-axis, you're either going to be in quadrant two or you're going to be in quadrant three. Okay, one of these two quadrants. All right, so the sign of y will ultimately determine what quadrants we lie in. Okay, so we can eliminate one and four. Those are not candidates for consideration. All right, to find the y-coordinate of our vertex, what we'll do is we'll compute f of negative b over 2a. What does this mean? It simply means you plug in negative b over 2a into the original function, okay? Since we already know what negative b over 2a is, we're going to, f of negative b over 2a is going to be f of negative 4. So let's plug that into the function, f of negative 4 equals negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 plus 10. Negative 4 squared is 16 minus 32 plus 10. Right? 
Let's add the positive numbers first. 26 minus 32 is negative 6. So we see that y is negative also. So which quadrant has both the x and y is be negative? That's going to be quadrant number 3. All right. So my answer is option 3 for number uh, 14. All right. There you have it. All right, let's go over uh, question number 15. So here it says in the figure below, ABC is a square and a semicircle zero has a radius of six. So if this is a square right here, what does that tell us? Um, if this is a square and this is a semicircle, we know that this is the radius and this is also the radius six, six. The entire um, length of this, I mean width of this square is 12 units. So this is also going to be 12, it's going to be 12, all right? So we're going to be confusing two areas here. So area of a semicircle is the same thing as the area of a circle divided by two, right? Area of a circle, if you look at your reference sheet, is pi r squared. Well, in this case, we're going to be dividing it by two since it's just half of a whole circle, okay? So um, the radius is six, since r is six, the area of a semicircle is going to be pi times 6 squared over 2, which equals 36 pi over 2, which equals um, 18 pi. All right, so you have to be careful. You need to remember to divide it by a 2 because it is a semicircle, okay? So this is 18 pi. Now, uh, what is the area of this square? We're just going to use length times width, width or side square, okay? <clears throat> so the area of the square is going to be uh, length times width. Square is a special case of a rectangle, so it's 12 times 12. 12 times 12 is 144. Okay, so the area of the figure, area of the figure is simply the sum of the two areas, right? So it's going to be 144, the area of the square, plus 18 pi which is the area of the uh, semicircle. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number three. Okay? So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, you can feel free to subscribe to this channel so you can get updates to uh, the next installment of this video. Uh, more clips can be found at theserve.com. Also, please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. Uh, thanks again and have a wonderful day.